know him too. It is a privilege today. Uh, this is this is youth ministry led, meaning anybody in the youth ministry department is a candidate here. And so, in passing, one point in time, uh, this gentleman said something, and then we followed up on it, and we just kind of kept going because I just believe the Lord had already laid something on his heart, and we just kept seeing it nudge and nudge and nudge. And so, it is my distinct honor. To, to ask Lester, big Lester, big Jason Lester to come forward. He is going to be bringing your devotion today. And I just know you guys are going to be blessed by it. So, Jason. Good morning, good morning. For those who don't know me, I am Jason Lester. This is my wife, Lisa. My mom and dad's right here. And uh, we're going to be talking about faith this morning. My wife is going to read the scripture for me. Can y'all hear me? Yeah? Ah, there goes my pen. Matthew 14, 22. Jesus walks on the water. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side. While he dismissed the crowd, after he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. When, even, when evening came, he had... Okay. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already considerably distant from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. Is it a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat and walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, You are truly the Son of God. All right. Before I start, um, this has been like a, uh, a dream of my mom's, right? <laughs> Since I was a kid, she always thought, like, hey, you're going to be a preacher one day. I'm not saying this is what's happening. <laughs> but, okay, so let's get into it. <sighs> so, Peter, Peter, he saw Jesus on the water. And Peter, Peter became, became scared of his situation. Right, so he took his eyes off God. And as he took his eyes off God, Peter began to sink because he didn't, he wasn't sure was exactly what he was doing, walking on the water. Just like us in life, we're not sure like what, what God has in store for us. We're not sure what, what life entails for us. But every day, he asks us to, to trust him, to believe in him, to walk in faith every day. So as Peter's walking on water to God, he begins to sink. But immediately, it says immediately, God reached his hand and caught Peter. Immediately. And it was just like um, two years ago. Uh, God showed me love two years ago. He immediately reached his hand and caught me. I had a knee surgery, playing basketball at this very, very place right over there. Because <laughs> that kid right over there. <laughs> but anyway, so I got hurt. And I, as I'm at my house, laying on the floor, just broken, not knowing, nobody knew about it. Maybe, I think Lisa did. I would just lay on the floor and just cry because I couldn't do nothing without help. And here I am, supposed to be like the, the man of the house. I'm stressed out because I can't move. I'm stressed out because I don't know how I'm going to make a way to pay these bills. Because these jokes would keep coming in, no matter what happened, they go keep coming in. So I was stressed out, laying on the floor, praying to God, like, to help me. K 
catch me. I'm sinking. So, but just like a ship, right? A ship, a ship don't sink because of the water. A ship sinks because of the water that's inside of the ship. That's the only way the ship sinks. So sometimes in life, we sink because of our life situation. So I let what was going on in my life, my injury, bring me down. I was sinking. So when God reached his hand and caught me through Pastor Eric, he lift me up. He, every Tuesday, he would come get me, and we would go to the movies. And I look forward to that because at that moment, I was no longer helpless. I was no longer depressed. I was no longer scared. I was no longer weak. He wouldn't let me be weak. He wouldn't let me be scared. He's like, don't worry about it. I got you. I got you. So as I'm walking in faith with Pastor Eric, as he ministering to me too, he's like, hey, we're going to do this together, man. All you got to do is take my hand. We're going to do this together. So me and Pastor Eric, we go to the movies, and he would minister through a struggle. But at the same time, I'm going through my struggles. I have a baby girl also going through a struggle. For she is becoming a, a new mom at this, at this point. She is learning how to, how to deal with the, the pregnancy. Her body is changing. She don't know quite what's going on with her. But due to being hurt, it was a blessing because as I was hurt, I was there to be there for Jazz for every doctor visit, holding her hand, being Jesus to her. I reached out and caught her. I was there, even in the delivery room, I was there for my baby. So there's like, no matter what we go through in life, no matter what we go through, we are a child of God. So as we, as we go through struggles, as we feel like life is just crumbling down on us, right? It says God immediately reached out his head and caught him. Immediately. He didn't think about it. He immediately reached his head and caught him. So that's what the pastor did for me, and that's what I was doing for my baby. I immediately reached out and caught him. So, and that's like, what, what greater love is that? Knowing that somebody cares that much for you, they'll catch you in your time of need. Like, you ain't got to, like, you don't have to worry about it, you don't have to question it. Like, he will catch you when you're falling. But then, like, it says once they, they got back to the boat, but how, you get, how did Peter get back to the boat? When Jesus caught him, he lifted him up, and they walked hand in hand back to the boat together. Just like Pastor Eric did for me, just like I did for Jazz. We walked hand in hand. He would like, Pastor Eric would like, someday we come give him, he would hold my popcorn, my drink, sometimes my jacket. And if I, if I needed to, to position myself a certain way, he would even hold my crutches. Like, he did this every Tuesday. But when he got back to the boat, the other guys in the boat, they said, oh, surely you are the son of God. It was evident. It was evident from what he, what he did that they could tell you are who you say you are. You are the son of God. Like, looking at my kids, you can tell that they are my kids. <laughs> Jazz has my smile. Jazz is a, y'all don't know Jasmine, she's a very sweet girl, very sweet. Little Jason has my work there. Little Jason wants to, wants to thrive in life. He wants to, be the, he wants to be that guy. So he works his behind off to be that guy. And then you got a little bit. Oh. A little bit has my nose and my, and my dimples. That's why she's so cute. <laughs> and Jeremiah, poor guy. He just has all of me. That's what Lisa tells me anyway. But then, like, past Eric's kids, right? Little Maddie, past Eric all day. Little Teresa, can't deny, all day. It's evident. Like, these are our babies. It's evident. There's no question. No question. We don't have to like make up some random excuse or who you are. None of that. It is evident. Like this is what's going on. Like these kids are ours. It's, it's evident. 
So I was sitting here thinking as I was writing this that all of this um, evidence, all of this this fear and, and stuff that's going on, why do we doubt? Why do we why are we scared? If we if we're a child of God, that's what we say we are. Why do we doubt? Why do we get scared when such a way things happen to us? Why? Why we're not walking in faith? Why we're not walking hand in hand with the Lord? He called us to. He said, Don't worry about today, because tomorrow has enough problem with his own. And if he's feeding the birds, how come you won't take care of us? So we should walk every day, hand in hand with the Lord. We should every day. Got something for y'all. Sam. So, they was working all day. Well, first, let me say this. First, I believe that God gave us the tool that we, that we need. And sometimes we already have the tool that we need to perform his, his work. We just don't believe in ourselves. So, when they, he was like, we was working all day. But not here all day, and we ain't catch nothing. He's like, I don't have a core with you. In other words, he was saying, I don't have no problem with you. I don't want to fuss with you, but I'm tired. And I'm ready to go home. We've been doing this all day. But he said, but Jesus was like, man, just throw your net, cast your net. So when Peter was like, looked at him crazy, he was like, mm, if you say so. All right, so it's just like our kids. I like, man, if you clean this, then you have to clean tomorrow. And they look at it like I'm crazy, but I they trust me. If you clean, you ain't got to clean tomorrow. And they be like, Ugh, if you say so. So as Peter cast out his net, not really, really having faith in God fully, but if you tell me to do it, then I'm going to do it. So as he cast his net out, God blessed him with the fish. Like, with a bunch of, bunch of fish, right? So, I believe, like, the gifts that we have, we're already equipped. It. If it's from speaking in front of people, if it's from being a sound tech, a pharmacist, being a photographer, being whatever it is, we're already equipped. We already got the tools that, God, that we need to do what God asks us to do. All we got to do is put it for an action. Like he said, if you say so. Then he said, I'll do anything you want me to do. What do you want me to do? Follow me. Follow me. So, Lakeview, let's cast our nets. Let's cast our nets. It's time for us to stand up as church and be faithful and cast our nets and catch all the blessing God has for us. What are we scared of? What are we waiting on? The world is going to have its own problems. And there's some things we can't do about it. Can't change none of that sometimes. But all we got to do is have faith of a mustard seed. J.D., a little bit. So if we have faith of a mustard seed, we can move a mountain. There's nothing we can't do. Just a little bit of mustard seed. All we gotta do is have that faith. Um, my last verse is uh, Isaiah 7, 7, 9. It says, if you stand firm in your faith, if you don't stand firm in your faith, I'm sorry, then you will not sin at all. In other words, it's saying, if we don't have faith, then we ain't got nothing. Like, there's nothing. It's like, if we don't have love, then we're just like a sound, like a sound God that's making noise, bling, 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 right? But without faith, then we don't have anything. There's nothing to have hope in, nothing to put our trust in if we don't have faith. 
Faith is the, is the cornerstone of everything that we're trying to do. So, I hope y'all guys are blessed by that. Thank you for allowing me to come up here and, and share this with you guys. Praise team.